time I don't ask me anything on my Instagram stories, I always get asked a question along the variation of how do you stay so upbeat? Uh, being a doctor can be depressing sometimes. How do you stay happy at work? So I thought I would just do a dedicated video to this topic and talk about the ways that I try to stay positive and happy in my life and hopefully give you a few actionable tips as well. I'm going to be doing a giveaway at the end of this video so make sure you're watching all the way to the end if you want to be in with a chance of winning one of these lined notebooks. These are notebooks that my sister and I sell in our Etsy shop so yeah if you want to get your hands on one then enter the competition at the end of the video. If you're new to my channel then welcome my name's sarah i'm a doctor in the uk and i make videos about my life as a doctor and also what i get up to in my free time so if you want to have a look at some of my other videos then i will link some down in the description box that i think you might find interesting and also you can have a look at my playlists check out some of my vlogs see what i get up to at work as a doctor and if you are enjoying my videos then don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you will get a notification every time I upload a video so you won't miss any and as always hit that little thumbs up button so that YouTube will know that you're enjoying my content. So I'm just going to start this video by telling you what this video is not. This is not a video to say that being positive and happy will cure anxiety or depression and also to say that if you are struggling with mental health problems and you feel that your mental health is not in a great place then that is okay and that I would encourage you to open up to someone and go and get some medical help. Something that I think is really key to my own mental happiness and well-being is to try and see the funny side in things. You, you've probably seen Vince in some of my videos, he is my boyfriend and he has the most brilliant sense of humour of pretty much anyone I know. He always sees the lighter side of life. Him and all of his family are very humorous people and they, they don't really take offence to things, they just see the funny side in things and I used to be quite uptight, I probably used to take offence to things a lot more than I do now. By watching how Vince doesn't take things too seriously and he just sees the humorous side in pretty much everything, it's really kind of loosened me up and, and made me a more sort of cheerful and happy person as well. I really do think that being around people who are particularly funny and humorous actually makes you feel more relaxed, even if you aren't around people who are particularly funny. You can watch funny videos, I mean the beauty beauty of the internet is that you don't have to just spend time with the people that you know in real life. Leading on from that, I try to always see the best in people and actually I don't know if I try to see the best in people. I think that it's in my nature, I, I'm inherently trusting in people. I do tend to see the good in everyone. Trying to cultivate that kind of mindset if it doesn't come naturally to you will probably help you feel a lot more positive as well. Just not assuming that people think badly of you. If you take the stance that we're all in this together and that everyone is on your side then you generally have a better day interacting with your colleagues, peers, friends, whoever it is. But if you aren't that kind of person, then it is definitely a skill that you can learn and practice and it will become a habit as you do it more and more. So I really do think that this has a lot to do with confidence and assuming that everyone's on your side and assuming you're all in this together and that people aren't thinking badly of you. If you go about your day thinking that everyone has it in for you and that people are noticing everything that you do wrong and commenting on your slip ups, then of course you're going to have a bad day and that you're going to be in a negative mindset. I noticed that I have been like this before. I remember when I had a really bad time at work, I noticed a couple of negative comments from members of staff. And at the time I remember thinking that they were directed at me, but actually looking back, they were probably just having a really stressful day. I was having a stressful day. I really internalized those comments and I probably projected a more negative image of myself. That in turn made people probably treat me more negatively. I'm having a crappy, crappy shift. <laughs> Try to not take offense when people say negative things because genu generally they aren't about you. They're about an accumulation of things that mean that they're having a bad day. When you see the best in people and, and, and assume that you're all on the same page and that you're all on the same team, it really does make you feel like you're part of a bigger community and that you you can all kind of muck in together for a bigger cause and it just makes your work day a bit more pleasant. 
Something that I've been making a real conscious effort to do is to bring my best self to work. That sounds so cheesy, I know, but um, no, it really is something that I've been trying to do. Thinking back to when I was working in Lincoln, uh, if you've seen my vlogs there, you will have seen that some days I was struggling. I did my F1 year, it was my first year of being a doctor, and I definitely had a lot of ups and downs. And I remember a particular period of time where I was feeling quite down at work a lot of the time. I felt very overwhelmed, out of my depth, and to be honest with you, I was struggling. Um, I noticed that if I came to work in a bit of a bad mood, just a bit tired, overwhelmed, and I started moaning to other people about how tired and overwhelmed I was, it was really contagious, and the energy level in the team just came down a peg. Whereas when I made a conscious effort to bring my best self, be enthusiastic about things, lift the team, then actually everyone seemed nicer, people were more warm and friendly to me and probably to each other and I didn't quite realise until that time how much of an impact my mood, just as one member of the team who was fairly insignificant in the grand scheme of things, could have on the whole department. So I would say, for this point, try to be aware of the energy that you bring into a team environment and 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 bring your best self to whatever it is that you're going to. So on those days where I was just feeling a bit down and a bit overwhelmed by everything, I really made an effort to come into work with a big smile, greet everyone really warmly, spend the extra 10 seconds asking how someone is and if they're okay, and actually making an effort to lift other people it made those lines of communication a bit more open. But to be honest with you, if things are really bad at work or in school or college or whatever it is, and you really do need to have a good moan, great, have a moan, have a bit of time where you and your friend just sit down and get it all out, get it off your chest because it does feel good. But I would say, put a bit of a limit on that. Have a bit of a period where you say, right, for five minutes, I'm just gonna completely tell you all of this grumpy stuff that I need to get off my chest, is that okay? Get it off your chest and then move on. Putting a bit of a limit on it will mean that you don't just carry on that grumpy mood for the rest of your day. The other thing I'd say is that if you are going to get stuff off your chest, especially at work or school or college, um, where you're in a team environment where things are meant to be in a bit more of a professional capacity, you do need to actually say something that is quite negative, then I would suggest trying to say it in a proactive way and giving solutions rather than just presenting problems. If there is something that's really grinding you down, then take it upon yourself to actually come up with a few different solutions and suggest these to the team so the final point that I'm going to make is an absolute game changer and this is a little gift from my mum. She is probably one of the happiest and most positive people that I know. I'm one of five children. Uh, one year at Christmas my mum gave all five of us this lovely notebook and she said to us, this is your happy book, I want you to write in all of your happy memories into this book. Now when she gave it to me I thought, oh that's such a sweet gift, that's really, really kind. As time went on and I was writing in this book I noticed something in me changing and I know that sounds really dramatic but I genuinely mean this. So I have been writing in this book um, probably maybe once or twice a week for the past few years. So the things that, that I'll write in it are like the best bit of my day or something that made me really laugh so hard that I absolutely belly laughed or those times where I just felt really warm and loved and very enthusiastic about life. So, or times where I've accomplished something and felt really proud of myself. There's a few things that this does. When you start writing in a book like this and noticing all of the good things in your day, your brain naturally starts looking for those things in the future. When you tell your brain to start looking for these things, your brain starts noticing them more and more and you realise how many good things are going on in your life. The second thing is that by getting these things down on paper, you're actually strengthening those neuronal connections in your brain, making it easier for you to access those happy memories because you've thought about them again. And the final thing is that when I've had times where I'm feeling a bit down or a bit grumpy, I just have a little flick through this book and I suddenly start feeling a bit happier, um, start feeling remembering all those warm, fond memories. So it's almost like a memory book for me as well. 
said to you at the start of the video that I was going to do a giveaway and here it is. I'm going to give away a book. These books are from mine and my sister's shop that we have on Etsy. We design these books ourselves. We do lots of different designs that we have available in our shop and I am going to give one of these notepads away to one of you lucky lot. So all you have to do to enter is to comment down below which of these books you would like to win. We have this a Michelle Obama book and we also have this clouds book with the gold foil printer over the top of it. The shop is called Nickels and Nickels. We sell on Etsy and I'll link it down below if you want to check out any of our other items. But otherwise, just comment down below which one's your favourite and you'll be entered into the draw to win one of these books. I'll announce the winner in my next video. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope that you have found some actionable tips that you can put into your life to just feel a bit more positive and happy. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it and subscribe down below if you'd like to see more of my content. Shout out this week goes to Adnan A. You are some sort of ninja on YouTube. You are always my first commenter. So I do notice you and I want to just say thank you for always being so dedicated to jumping on that first comment every single time I release a video. I hope that you have enjoyed this video guys and I will see you in my next one. Bye. Oh,